Here I have a sketch with the three different types of arcs. The center point arc, the tangent arc, and the three point arc. These arcs can be modified while they are in edit sketch mode, either by clicking and dragging the center point or the end points on the arc. However, it is important to keep in mind that if an arc was drawn and relations were added, modifying the shape of the arc will still maintain those relations and can significantly alter the entire sketch. The center point arc has been sketched with a coincident relationship between the center point and the construction lines, so I am only able to drag the end points of the arc or the arc itself. If I drag the lower end point upward, notice that the arc can change in length and the radius can increase or decrease. If I drag the arc itself, the angle of the arc remains the same, but the radius of the arc changes. If I try to modify the location of the center point, which has relations added with the construction lines, notice that the tangent arc on the right is modified simultaneously. I'll press Ctrl-Z on the keyboard to undo the modification. I can also modify the end point of the tangent arc. As I drag the end point down and to the right, the arc keeps its relation with the end point of the construction line, but can change radius and the length of the arc. I can also drag the center point of this arc. However, this modifies the center point arc simultaneously. This also occurs when attempting to drag the arc itself. I'll undo these modifications. The three-point arc has been sketched with no geometric relations, so the endpoints can be modified. as well as the arc itself and the center point. It is important to sketch these arcs while keeping sketch relations in mind, so that if modifications are needed, the sketch geometry will maintain its intended shape. With a regular circle and a perimeter circle added to the sketch, I'll begin adding arcs to replicate the sketch profile on the left. There are three different types of arcs that can be used in SOLIDWORKS, which are the center point arc, the tangent arc, and the three point arc. These can be found here in the Sketch tab of the Command Manager, in the Tools drop down menu under Sketch Entities. In the right click menu while in Sketch mode, and in the Shortcut menu, which can be accessed by pressing the S key. From the shortcut menu, I'll select the first type of arc, the center point arc. The property manager appears and has two boxes with available options. The arc type box allows you to switch between the three different types of arcs, and the parameters box allows you to specify dimensions and positions for the arc once it's drawn, such as the X and Y coordinates of the center point, the X and Y coordinates of each endpoint, the radius of the arc, and the angle that the arc spans across. These are currently grayed out, but will become available as I draw the arc. The center point arc is drawn by clicking the position of the center point first, then clicking to start the position of the arc, and then moving the cursor along the inference line and placing the other endpoint. I want to create the arc shown here in the sketch profile on the left, which has its center point at the center of the perimeter circle I drew earlier. With the center point arc activated, I'll click the center point of the arc at the center of the perimeter circle, then begin the arc at the bottom of the vertical construction line, and then end the arc at the other end point. Now that the arc has been added, the property manager updates and additional options become available, such as viewing existing relations, adding relations, converting the arc into construction geometry, and specifying the geometric parameters of the arc. I'll leave these values at their defaults, and I can click the green check to exit the arc properties, or I can press the escape key to exit as well. The next type of arc is the tangent arc, which I can access by clicking the drop-down arrow for arcs found in the sketch tab of the command manager.
I will use the tangent arc to replicate the arc in the sketch profile on the left that starts at the bottom of the vertical construction line and extends around the right side of the center point circle. To begin sketching the circle, I must click on the point where I want the arc to begin lying tangent to another curve, and then place the other end point of the arc. To begin sketching the arc, I will place the first point at the bottom of the vertical construction line and move the cursor up and to the right. Notice that SOLIDWORKS doesn't appear to be creating the same arc as it's shown in the sketch profile on the left. This is because SOLIDWORKS interpreted the arc to be tangent to the circle, rather than the arc inside the circle. I'll press ESCAPE to exit the arc, reactivate the tool, and this time I'll get SOLIDWORKS to create the arc tangent to the existing arc by hovering over and tracing the bottom portion of the arc until I reach the endpoint. Then click at the bottom of the construction line, move up and to the right, and complete the arc at the top of the construction line. There is also an additional way to create tangent arcs, which can be accessed by using the auto-transitioning capability while sketching a line. To demonstrate this, I will first delete the tangent arc I just created, then click on the line tool in the command manager. Hover and trace the bottom of the center point arc. Click on the endpoint, and a line begins to be sketched. To enable auto transitioning, I will move the cursor back over the point where I began sketching the line, and the icon updates, indicating that I have enabled auto transitioning and I can now sketch a tangent arc. I'll press the Escape key to demonstrate one more shortcut to access the tangent arc. I'll delete this tangent arc once more. Activate the Line tool once again, and repeat the same process to begin sketching a line. Once I have begun sketching the line, instead of using Auto Transitioning, I can press the A key on the keyboard, which will automatically switch over to the Tangent Arc tool. From here, I can move the end of the arc to the top of the construction line, and place it to complete the arc. I'll click the green check to complete the arc. The final type of arc is the three-point arc, which I will access by right-clicking in the graphics area and selecting it from the menu. I will use this tool to create the arc shown on the left side of the completed sketch profile. This arc is created by setting the two end positions of the arc and then pulling that arc outward away from the two endpoints, and then clicking to set a third point on the arc. I'll begin sketching this arc by clicking the first endpoint at the bottom of the vertical construction line. Set the other point at the top of the construction line, and then moving the cursor to the left to pull the arc outside the center circle. I'll place this point so that the arc roughly matches the size of the arc in the other sketch profile. This completes the arc in the sketch profile, and I'll click the green check to exit the tool. In the next video, I will use a different sketch to demonstrate how to modify these arcs. Here I have a sketch with multiple circles and arcs drawn around two perpendicular construction lines. To begin creating the sketch, I will create the circle that is centered on these two lines. To access the Circle tool, I can either click on the icon from the Sketch tab of the Command Manager, or from the Tools drop-down menu under Sketch Entities, by right-clicking in the Graphics area and choosing Circle or by pressing the S key to access the shortcut menu and choosing Circle. Once I click the tool, the Property Manager appears and lists a few options. The first box, Circle Type, has two options, either a standard circle or a perimeter circle. The standard circle is created by first clicking the center point, and then clicking further away to set the radius of the circle. The perimeter circle is created by clicking on three points that lie along the circumference of the circle, and the center point is interpolated from the three perimeter points. The Options box has the checkbox for Construction, which will allow the circle to be converted to construction geometry once it's drawn. The Parameters box has spin buttons that can assign the position of the center point along the x-axis, the y-axis, and the radius of the circle. However, these parameters appear in gray and cannot be specified until the circle has been sketched in the graphics area.
To sketch the first circle, I'll make sure I'm sketching a standard circle type. Move the cursor over the center point of the construction lines on the right. Click to place the center of the circle. Drag the mouse away from the center. And click to place the edge of the circle at the end point of the construction line. Notice that since the circle has been drawn in the graphics area, the property manager updates and includes additional options such as existing relations, adding relations, the for construction checkbox, and the circle parameters become available. I'll leave these options at their default values and click the green check in the property manager to complete the circle. Next, I would like to create the circle that is located within the circle I just drew. This will be created using the perimeter circle tool. Notice that it is coincident to the point where the construction lines meet, as well as coincident to the edge of the circle around it. To create the circle, I will press the S key to bring up the shortcut menu. Click the arrow next to the circle icon and select Perimeter Circle from the drop-down menu. I'll sketch the first point of the circle at the center of the two construction lines. Choose the second point to be at the end of the horizontal construction line, and then choose the third point so that the crosshairs for the center point locate on top of the construction line. Instead of clicking the green check in the Property Manager, I'll press the Escape key to exit the circle properties. Circles can be modified in two different ways while in sketch mode. The first is to click and drag the edge of a circle to increase or decrease the circumference. If I click the edge of the perimeter circle and move upward, notice that the circle remains coincident at the two points I made the circle coincident to when I sketched it. However, the circle increases in size as I drag. The other method of modifying a circle is to click and drag the position of the center point. If I drag the center of the same circle, notice that the same two points remain coincident. And I can create an additional coincident relationship between the center of the circle and the horizontal construction line. This completes adding the two different circle types to the sketch. And I'll demonstrate how to add arcs in the next video.